Hey y'all, it's Joseph Flipper, and today I want to share with you all the rules that you need to know for Vex Pushback. This new game, Vex Pushback, has just been released, and I'm super excited about it, and I want to share with you all the rules that are really, really important to know for this year. So, let's get started. So, if we go to the game manual here, then we see that we have all these sections, and we have our... Uh, little cheat sheet for all the rules. And there, I'm gonna go over just a few of the couple of the most important rules here. So the first one we're gonna go through is we're gonna go through our SC rules. And these ones just tells you kind of rules about the game, what counts, what doesn't. Um, this just tells you about what counts as a block that's scored. It does have to be all the way in the tube, can't be on the floor. Um, for the control bonus, this one is kind of cool. It does have to be on the inside of these white tape lines. It cannot be like under the white tape line. You have to see it all the way inside between those white tape lines to count as in that center zone for that 10-point bonus if you have the majority there. Next, um, what counts as parked? You do have to be all the way in this zone. You, you can be hanging over the edge, but you cannot be touching the floor outside the zone. So as long as you're only touching the floor inside the zone and this C shape here in that park zone, that's good. You're good to go there. And next up, our autonomous bonus, uh, that's 10 points, just good to know that. Our autonomous win point, this is very important. Make sure you score seven blocks across three different goals. Um, and you need to at least remove three blocks from those loaders. So those little towers with the, the blocks in them, you got to remove three of those f of your color and uh, make sure you get both robots off of that park zone, and then you can get the autonomous win point. So those are the SC rules, and it's about to get a little bit more complicated, so if you want a rule summary of all of these rules, uh, just don't forget to click that link in the description below, and I will send you all the details on a rule summary, just one page of all the rules that you need to know. So, let's get back into it. We have, up next, we have our uh, SG rules. So, we can go ahead and let's start with our SG1 here. SG1 is a rule that seems fairly normal. It's a little bit different though. It's a little bit more complicated. Basically, the normal rule is that you can be 18 by 18 by 18 cube. Now that's that's fine. You do get a preload and that's also normal. The not normal thing is that this rule right here, no horizontal dimension may exceed 22 inches. If you do the math, a horizontal dimension of 22 inches means you only get about a 15.3 inch by 15.3 inch robot if you want to make a a cube robot or a, a square robot and that is way smaller than 18 by 18 so you got to make sure do not build an 18 inch by 18 inch robot this year that will be illegal you will not pass inspection by the way that the rules are currently written you have to make sure that no horizontal diagonal on your robot is more than 22 inches as for vertical expansion you can go up to 22 inches that's okay but just make sure that horizontal one does not go more than 22 inches Next up, we have SG5, where you just get a preload. That one's pretty normal. Just make sure you know to use that. Um, SG6 is super important also. You get unlimited possession. No possession limits. You can carry as many red blocks, blue blocks of either color that you want. That's really cool, and I'm excited to see what teams do with that one. Um, up next, we have um, SG9. Um, SG9, basically, you can do match loads, um, and match loads are done a little bit differently this year. Basically, you put the balls the, in the top of the towers on the side of the field, and your robot can grab them at the bottom. And that's a really unique thing that Vex has never done before, and I'm excited to see how that plays out. Um, you get six of them for each uh, loader, and yeah, it, it's really cool. Um, next up, we have our uh, SG11. This one is super, super important. Make sure that during the last 20 seconds of the match, you don't touch the other alliance's park zone or any robots that are in it or touch any blocks that are touching the park zone or anything like that. Otherwise, you can get disqualified. So those are all the SG rules. And if you're like, well, that was a lot of rules, go ahead and click that link in the description below and I will send you all the details on the rules. Just a quick summary in plain English of what you need to know with rule citations. So if you're ever coming up to a referee and they're like, hey, you did this wrong, you pull up the rule summary and be like, oh, on account of SG11, I say that you're wrong, um, then you can have that rule right there pulled up on that one page summary. So click the link in the description below for that. And let's keep going. All right, next up, we have the RSC rules. These RSC rules are the robot skills rules. And there's just a couple of ones I wanted to mention for this year. How they work this year is 
a little bit different than the normal matches, which is why I wanted to mention them. Basically, the scoring here is a bit different. Every block in a goal, instead of being three points, is one point. Um, the control zone in those long goals is uh, five points, and the control zone in the center goals are going to be ten points. And parking is just going to be five points. Uh, clearing a loader, this one's kind of cool, is five points, and parking gets you 15 points. So keeping those point values in mind compared to the other ones, which we can look at here, um, I believe at the top of our uh, SG rules, um, uh, our, sorry, SC rules, um, right here, it gives us our table of normal match scoring, um, whereas uh, our blocks are three points, our control zone is 10 points, um, control center goal of the top, top one is eight, bottom one is six, parking gets you eight or 30 points for one and two robots. So good to have those differences in mind as we play the game, but those are the important scoring rules to know. And if that was a lot, make sure you click that link in the description below to get a uh, detailed uh, summary in plain English that is easy to understand with all the rule citations that you need to play this game. So there, with that, there's two more rules that I wanna mention. Um, that are a little bit annoying that Vex put in this year, but I do want to mention them to make sure that we don't accidentally violate any of them or anything like that. The first one is uh, right here. We have R19. R19 just says stuff that is not allowed, and under the not allowed stuff, we have 3D printed parts. That is a new rule. Of course, you couldn't use 3D printed parts before, but now you can't even use them for decoration and for license plates and stuff like that. You have to use the Vex official license plates. You cannot use... Uh, uh, 3D printed license plates or anything like that. So make sure you don't come to the competition with 3D printed stuff on your robot because you'll have to take it off to pass inspection. Next, uh, we have an even more interesting one that Vex did where we have our plastic that is allowed or actually not allowed. Um, they used to allow a sheet of plastic cut up however you want. Now they only allow 12 individual pieces of plastic. Each piece can be up to 4 inches by 8 inches by 1 16th thick. So that is a really, really um, constricting rule uh, for this year because so many teams would use like 50 or 100 pieces on their robot and now you get 12. So this is going to be a really interesting rule to if X decides to keep it, uh, how teams are really going to uh, get this rule to work with their robot. So just make sure you are aware of this and don't use more than 12 pieces on your robot. So. With that, that is all the really important rules you need to know for this year, just to make sure you don't, you know, break any rule by accident or anything like that. And that is kind of how you play the game. I'm excited to see what you guys build, and I'll see you guys at the competition.